young people. Kia ora. Kia ora. Todd Muller. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker, and uh, I look forward to stand and speak in support of the films, videos, publications, classification, interim restriction orders, classifications, Amendment Bill second, oh, yeah, reason, right. second reading. And uh, actually, it's a quite a privilege to follow uh, Louisa Wall's contribution. I think, uh, as I've listened, I'm the last speaker on this uh, uh, bill uh, this evening. I think, uh, to be honest, hers would have to be right up there as some of the more considered uh, contribution to the debate uh, that we have had uh, thus far this evening. Um, Mr Speaker, if I could just have a moment's indulgence um, and uh, just pivot away uh, for 30 seconds and just acknowledge uh, the America's Cup win of last night, yesterday, uh, and in particular the performance not only of the team but of Peter Burling. Uh, he's a, uh, a fellow Tauranga Boys uh, uh, fellow, uh, and it was absolutely fantastic to uh, see him uh, guide uh, Emirates Team New Zealand to that victory. Uh, actually, uh, just as an aside, there is a big picture at Tauranga Boys College of three of their most famous old boys, and it's Sam Kane, uh, Kane Williamson, and Peter Burling. And every time I drive past there, I hope that perhaps one day my pitch will be there too, but uh, they all seem to have a sporting uh, focus, uh, Mr Speaker. Uh, can I firstly uh, acknowledge uh, Chris, uh, Chris Bishop uh, for um, uh, not only his luck uh, in terms of having these uh, drawn out, but actually his, his ability as a legislator, because as uh, Louisa has just said, actually, you know, part of uh, the import of Parliament is to uh, have uh, a day of members' bills where all of us uh, as uh, uh, non-executive uh, uh, backbenchers or opposition have the, opposition, have the opportunity to put forward uh, um, issues that we think should be resolved. Some of them are more philosophical, uh, profound and talk to the direction perhaps of the, of the country. Uh, some, of it, some of them reflect our own individual uh, priorities. Some are just a small but needed uh, interventions to make the law uh, apply more uh, effectively. Uh, and Chris is not only an effective uh, local um, uh, community representative MP, but he's also, in my view, a, a very effective legislator because he saw this uh, as an anomaly uh, and researched himself the mechanisms to be able to address that anomaly, uh, and that is essentially what we're reflecting on here this evening uh, as, this, as the uh, second reading. Uh, can I also acknowledge the extraordinary Sarah Dowie uh, for her um, uh, chairmanship of uh, this uh, Justice and Electoral Committee. I don't uh, have the privilege of sitting in on that committee, but I uh, hear from everybody else you do a fantastic job. So that's... Um, so, uh, look, um, just some comments, I guess, from my perspective um, on what I have... Uh, uh, what I you know, understand this uh, bill is about, but particularly the uh, contributions that have been made by uh, uh, various speakers uh, thus far uh, this evening. Uh, as people will know, uh, this is a, a bill that is designed to fix up a particular anomaly around uh, interim uh, restrictions. It's not a significant change. It's, you know, it's a small, but as I said, uh, uh, needed change to improve uh, uh, that balance between our freedom of expressions uh, and the appropriate application of a framework which assesses the risk to uh, children and young people uh, and adults of certain uh, uh, objectionable material uh, being uh, made available. And uh, as we've heard, um, this, the current framework um, uh, was applied with respect to uh, Ted Dawes award-winning uh, Into the River uh, and essentially meant that when um, the... Um, uh, uh, a review uh, was to assess the, um, uh, the, uh, the classification decision that was on the table. Uh, they really had no choice but to either make it completely available uh, or uh, re restrict it. There was no other tools in the toolbox, if you like, to be able to reflect as to um, uh, alternative, more nuanced um, uh, interim uh, restriction orders that could be made. Uh, and so it did result in a somewhat um, surprising, um, uh, arguably, uh, decision that it was completely banned. Uh, and we know from experience that the moment something is banned, uh, for a moment, for obviously there's the uh, restriction of freedom of access, but it also, um, somewhat bizarrely, heightens uh, public uh, interest to the uh, book itself. So, uh, you know, others have said that it sort of became a slightly 
um, uh, in many ways self-defeating uh, uh, process, particularly for those who wanted the uh, uh, um, book less freely available. Actually, it revi reminds me, uh, uh, Mr. Speaker, you know, of when I was back in Tauranga Boys College, uh, and you'd go to the library. Um, we all knew there were certain books there that were perhaps more risque than others, uh, and invariably, and invariably, they the were the ones that were. Uh, uh, taken out uh, more often, you know, and uh, you know that they were taken out more often. Uh, and you know, humour aside, and I appreciate I put myself up for that, but seriously, there is a key point there that at one level you have a framework that is trying to restrict access, but actually, uh, the community who you're seeking to uh, talk to, uh, they know the kinds of uh, uh, material that they'd like to understand and, and reflect on. Uh, and often those attempts to, uh, um, you know, to constrain actually don't work. And so in that scenario, sort of the adults were thinking they were running a process that were so-called protecting people, when actually uh, all the students at the school, uh, um, you know, they found out which books were better to read than others. You know? And that's the reality here, trying to get the balance right between a framework of protecting people and actually the reality uh, of uh, making uh, uh, information available for people that suits their understanding of uh, life. Uh, Mr Speaker, um, in terms of the departmental report, um, as, been, as has been well canvassed, uh, four submissions uh, to oral general support. Uh, interesting, um, the sort of submissions were either on the path of, um, you know, more constraint is probably useful versus a more perhaps libertarian perspective. But it was interesting that some of the uh, submissions were focused on more broader policy around the value of interim restriction orders generally, uh, amendments to the appeal process, um, vesting discretion to grant an order in the Board of Review as a whole, uh, and the expediation, or expedition, sorry, of uh, uh, reviews um, to uh, speed them up. And uh, I found that uh, particularly interesting. Mr Speaker, there's been quite a few uh, um, uh, solid contributions uh, uh, to this debate uh, this evening. Uh, I think uh, Chris Bishop uh, 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 summarised his intent when he talked about uh, the importance of accurately cal calibrating uh, the interim uh, classification and to give, obviously, more tools to the review uh, board uh, itself and the small change that assists uh, freedom of uh, uh, speech. Um, I thought uh, Sarah Dowie's uh, contribution reflecting on the balance that is sought between public good uh, and freedom of uh, speech was particularly interesting, and also her acknowledgement of the extraordinary efforts uh, that the Board of Review uh, have to go through on behalf of the community. This, is a, you know, this isn't black and white. These things are grey, uh, and society is a different society in 2017 than it was in 2010 or indeed 1990. So they have to move with the appetite uh, um, and the expectation of uh, the broader uh, community, and I think they, uh, uh, they do it uh, well. Uh, can I acknowledge your uh, uh, support, uh, Maureen, for the West Coast, and particularly uh, uh, your uh, strong advocacy for the availability uh, of libraries and some of the challenges libraries have around getting the balance right in terms of availability uh, and access on materials such as this. Barry Coates's uh, contribution, uh, talking specifically around the wider um, availability of objectional material, particularly uh, what's available online. You know, I thought that was uh, quite measured uh, and uh, fair, and I think certainly as a as a parent of uh, a seven, nine, and eleven, uh, sorry, nine, eleven, and thirteen uh, year old, these these issues are very uh, very front of mind. Um, uh, you know, with respect to some of um, uh, Tracy Martin's. Uh, 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 comments, and even uh, to be re in respect, I think, some of Poto Williams's comments, there has been a view from some here today that because this is a narrow um, uh, bill, because it's a narrow change, it therefore uh, lacks merit. And I think, uh, as Louisa Wall, I think, quite uh, uh, well articulated, uh, this is the day for both broad philosophical debates and, at times, relatively narrow interventions. Uh, that don't meet the threshold of something that would be, you know, a large government bill. So I do think it's appropriate, and I think some of the uh, reactions to that being discussed here uh, is a bit sort of uh, overstated. Uh, Mr Speaker, um, uh, look, it has been fascinating debate, uh, a very, very good uh, contribution um, uh, by Chris Bishop to have this debated, and it's great to see that, uh, with the exception of New Zealand First, this has support. 
It's a shame they can't uh, support it, I think, in their hearts they want to. Uh, it's just they just want to deny Chris the second opportunity for a unanimous uh, uh, public uh, member's uh, bill. Uh, so I certainly support it, and uh, I know 90% uh, of the House does too. Thank you. Members, the question is that the motion be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. The clerk will conduct a party vote. New Zealand National.